But one of my favorites that I've seen is the concept of Motorola bringing back the flip phone. So I think we all remember the Motorola Razr, one of the most iconic phones of all time in that whole little clamshell form factor days, bringing that back, but as a foldable screen smartphone. But if you see those renders, you realize the tech is nowhere near that point. So the foldable phones of today are nowhere near ready yet. The foldable phones of today are nowhere near ready yet. The foldable phones of today are nowhere near ready yet. So what Marquez was saying wasn't necessarily wrong. Also, it wasn't just Marquez. It was Mr. Who's the Boss, Tom the Tech Chap, a lot of YouTubers. Hell, even me, before YouTubing was even a thing in my head, I thought foldable phones were a gimmick, a novelty, nowhere near as safe, strong, sturdy as they should be for a daily use device. What's up guys? Make sure you stay tuned to the end of the video and I will announce the lucky winner of the Xiaomi Mi Band 6. So yeah, stay tuned to the end of the video. Again, just one year later, if you consider the first fold from Samsung a success, which I'm not going to, but two years after Marquez made this video along with Mr. Who's the Boss, Aaron, the Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 2 came out and by all intents purposes an absolute flagship pioneer in the Fold market which I didn't buy because I was still sceptical but one year later bringing us almost up to date with the Z Fold 4 coming out this year I purchased the Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 3 and love it. What an absolute marvel in engineering. And yes, the Z Fold 3 does have quite a visible line side on, but trust me, when you're using the device in its open book format, you very quickly lose the line. That crease just disappears. I have noticed as well, since the Z Fold 3, other companies like Oppo, and Vivo have released their own versions of a Fold device with almost zero crease. Absolutely outstanding. Now to get into what is going on here, the screen can fold because of absolutely microscopic, thin as you like, paper thin glass that can actually fold. It'll never fold completely flat, like if you're folding a piece of paper, it curves, the slightest curve. This isn't new technology as such. If you're holding an iPhone 10, for example, from years ago, it does the same thing in a less dramatic way. The iPhone, so that you've got that no chin, and bezel-less almost, for iPhone, fairly bezel-less design, is because the display curves underneath itself, so it curves back on itself. All Samsung and Oppo and Vivo and other phones, uh, manufacturers like Huawei, all they're doing is pushing that technology to its limits and making the fold visible to you and not hidden underneath its metal or aluminium casing. And again, Samsung being the pioneers and the first ones to do this, kudos to you. But like all other technology, other phone manufacturers and organisations are taking that technology and pushing it further and further and further. Now I have the Z Fold 3 and I absolutely love it. Let's talk about the phone very, very briefly. The Z Fold 3 is a 6.5 inch outer display at 120 hertz works absolutely beautifully very thin aspect ratio like 20 by 9 so thinner than an even an xperia mobile phone but works for checking messages taking photos whatever you want to do works great 
When you unleash the beast, you have a 6.7.6 inch inner display diagonal. Also at 120 hertz, battery life, I get a full day out of it. That's all I'm asking for. Again, if you watch any of my videos, I don't need my mobile phone to go days and days and days. But if I can get a confident full day of heavy use, I'm happy because I will just charge it overnight. Camera wise, there are cameras. There's a triple camera array, two times optical zoom, uh, ultra wide angle on there and a normal wide camera, all 12 megapixel lenses. Samsung didn't take the camera array from the S21 Ultra, which I wish they had. Apparently the Fold 4 is going to have a way better camera with a 10 times optical zoom. So I look forward to that. Other functionalities, fingerprint sensor on the side, which works really well. Um, aluminium casing, the body or armor aluminium they're calling it. Super sturdy, no scratches on mine whatsoever. The Z Fold 3 is also water resistant, not dust resistant. So it's IPX8 resistant, not 6 8. So if you're going to the beach, don't take the fold. If you get sand in that hinge or on that display and shut it, yeah. The display is, because it's coated in a very thin plastic on top of that very, very thin glass, it is susceptible to scratches if you are careless. I, however, am not careless and I'm pretty sure, yeah, so no scratches if I just lock that and see it, no scratches, smudges, but no scratches on my device as of yet. So that's it. You can see review videos. This isn't necessarily a review on the Z Fold 3. This is a review on folds in general. If you are sitting watching this video thinking that folds are a novelty, I can assure you, you are wrong. They're not a novelty. Use case scenarios for me being that when I'm commuting to and from work on public transport, it is extremely easy for me to unfold my device reply, respond to emails, multitasking is absolutely amazing on this device. Let me just show you. So if I'm checking, say for example, I'm on Teams, you can see the list of users on one side, click on somebody you want to message, then the message will appear on the right hand side. Same with emails, your emails appear on the left. If you click on an email, you can then draft another email on the right hand side. You can also, if you want to have a YouTube pop-up floating window in the corner, you can also play music at the same time as having a YouTube video silent if you wanted. You can have your notes up. You can do multiple things with this device unfolded. And when it's folded, you can still do some stuff, but I wouldn't want to multitask on that really thin screen. Other companies like Vivo and Oppo, they've made their outer display massive, particularly in Vivo's scenario. Vivo is essentially an iPhone 13 Pro Max on the outside and on the inside is an eight inch foldable screen. Yes, it's 2000 euros. I think you could probably get somewhere in Europe. You can't get it in the UK. I am wary to order this from Giztop or Wanda purely because it's a hell of a lot of money. Wanda Mobile, by the way, I do have a video on them and they're absolutely fantastic. I'll link that up in the corner and the description. Highly recommend Wanda Mobile, but again, even through Wanda, buying the Chinese ROM variant, which does have Google Apps, um, it's like 1,700 pounds. Yeah, I, until I start getting that real YouTube baller money, I won't be um, spending that on a phone from China. But the point is the technology there, it works. Again, you can check out some really good reviews, uh, particularly Flossie, my man Flossie Carter, he's got a good review on the Vivo X Fold. What a phone. So. What MKBHD said right at the start is he thinks the future of folding phones design-wise is the Motorola clamshell. I think we can all agree Marquez was wrong, absolutely wrong. Um, not that the Samsung Z Flip isn't a good 
phone and well designed, but the Motorola in particular, it was fair play for trying, but it was a poorly um, implemented phone, in my opinion, um, and in the world's opinion, as it sold well, about 12, so yeah, but they tried. The Z Flip and the Z Fold are head and shoulders above most others when it came to making fold phones a couple of years ago. As mentioned, other companies are, are catching up, but for me, the best fold design is the book style that opens up. Yes, other companies have tried phones that open out the way, and I know that there's this is where you can clip this segment coming up and use it on me in a couple of years. I know that rollable phones are becoming a thing. No, 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 no. I don't think rollable phones are going to stick around. When we talk novelty, well, that to me is a complete novelty. There's just seems to me too much that can go wrong with a rollable phone, both mechanically uh, and potentially software wise. For example, when you have a phone closed right now, the software Android or, well, not iOS, Android software knows and the apps know what it, you want to do. When you open it, it will then allow for multitasking. Where I think full rollable phones will have an issue is, what if you only roll the phone halfway? I think the software will not be intuitive enough to know that you're just stretching out slightly. It'll either want you to open it fully or close it fully. Hopefully that makes sense. What's up? Me again. Just have to interrupt here to tell you the lucky winner of the Xiaomi Mi Band 6. Every commenter, I just want to say thank you very much for that. It helps such a small channel as mine grow to get comments and likes and views, obviously. So of the 20 plus, if not 30 plus comments, I have picked a random one. I gave every commenter a number, picked a number out of hat, and that number happened to be Stephen Cowie. You are the lucky winner of the Xiaomi Mi Band 6, which I have here. I will leave my Instagram handle in the description below. If you could send me a DM on there, I can arrange to get the watch sent to your address. Thanks, Stevie. Congrats. Probably not being eloquent enough, but if you're just halfway in between either open or closed, apps will struggle and you may even jump between like visibly jump between multitasking or not, or open or shut. I think it's just going to be a nightmare. Do I think they can work on the software? Absolutely, of course they can. Look what they can do with phones. But do I think it'll be worth it? No. The Z Fold 4, if it has better cameras and a same build, I'm happy with that. So, in short, foldable phones are not a novelty. They are absolutely here to stay. And I love it. And I look forward to the future of Foldable. And if anybody wants to send me a Vivo X Fold, I promise to love you forever and do a review on it every week. Yeah, so Wanda, if you're watching, help me Wanda. Oh, that was a bad dad joke. Anyway, thanks very much for watching. Enjoy your day. Peace.